Hi, this is David Papkin with TSI Consulting Services. Welcome back to Upgrading Your Skills to Windows Server 2016. And I'm talking about configuring networking services. So in this, I'm going to configure DHCP failover. So I'm going to install a DHCP on additional server, configure a DHCP scope, and then configure DHCP failover. I've clicked start here. I'm going to go to server manager. And of course, I'm going to add roles and features. And I'm going to add DHCP. Features, next, 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 install. Now I'm going to close it. I'm going to complete DHCP configuration. Next, commit, close. I'm going to go tools here and show you under DHCP. There's no scope. There are no scope on this one right here. The next thing I'm going to do is configure a scope. And DHCP. Active Directory using computers. I'm going to go to DNS update proxy, members, I'm going to add London DC1 and server1, check the names. Add computers. Good. And I'm going to say OK. The point of this one here, clients who are permitted to perform dynamic updates on behalf of other clients, such as DHCP servers. I'm going to go here. I have the scope right here. You see new scope. Building to scope. That's for the new building at HQ. Thanks. And the IP address range, 192.168.2.11. 192.168.2.100. 24-bit mask, and I'll say next. Lease duration, add any exclusions, next. Lease duration, next. Leave the default of eight days. Yes, I will configure these options now. The router, 
172.16.0.10. And this one right here. The router gateway, I'm going to leave it alone. And this one right here, I'm going to remove this and change this to 9. Add. It's going to check and see if it Not valid, but I'm going to add it anyway. Wins next. I'm going to activate the scope now. Next thing I want to do is configure DHCP failover. On London Server 1, And we go into here. I'm going to add a server. So I'm going to add London DC1 to this. Good on this one right here. I'm going to expand London DC1. I'm going to right click this and go configure failover. I'm going to go next. Now the partner server is 172.16.0.11. Next. In the relationship name, I'm going to call this one a datum. Not that it really matters. Maximum lead time, zero. Minimum, 15. The mode is set to load balance. The load balance percentage is 50. 50-50. The state switch over one is at 60. In the enable message authentication, the shared secret. P A dollar sign dollar sign W zero R D and then finish. So this is successful. Now let's take a look now at server four. Now one thing is in here, it's just not off. Let me go in this one right here. On this one right here, see it on this. See if he's authorized. It's already present in there. Great. Let me try to refresh. Okay. Look at this now. Suddenly. You can see is in here. Look at this, it's the same address pool for that. The same one as this. See, it's the same one on this one. And let's look at the scope options. The router in this. The scope options on here. And the next thing I want to do, I want to, after configure, the next thing I'm going to do is here, test the HTTP failover. 
And right click start. Network connections. Right click Ethernet. Properties. Obtain the IP address and DNS automatically. Okay. Okay, it says here I got an IP. It says unauthenticated. DHCP, yes. Or it got it from from 172.16.0.10, which is London DC1. So I'm going to do from London Server 1. I'm going to right click and stop this one right here. So now it's stopped. I'm going to go back to client one. Release. Renew. I notice on here it couldn't get an IP address. I'm going to go back and check and see why this one here, under here, why it's red. Let me check this out. I'm going to try to restart him and see if it makes any difference about that. Okay. So what I'm going to do now on server one. Is now start him. So I've installed DHCP an additional server. Configured a DHCP scope, configured failover, and tested failover. This is David Papkin. Thank you for watching. Next video is going to be IPAM.